Good morning. Hello and welcome to a very special broadcast by the Science Centre Singapore here in our observatory. So thank you for joining us today for the partial solar eclipse viewing. And um, I'm Jashen and I'll be your host for today. And here is Ming, my co-host. Hello. Yeah, he's a senior science educator and he will be our astronomy specialist for today. So he will be addressing more of the technical questions that you and I may have as like non-experts during the solar eclipse. So if you have any questions, okay, you may uh, go down to the description below. Right, and you'll find a link to our Q&A, so you can just submit any questions that you might have and we will answer your questions towards the end of the live stream. So hello everyone! Hello! <laughs> so uh, unfortunately, due to the wet and cloudy weather that we're experiencing now in Singapore, the partial solar eclipse viewing is not possible at the moment, so within the next first or second hour, if it clears up, we'll reopen a dome and like set up for the viewing. So thankfully, we are also very fortunate to have partnered up with SciTech Australia to bring to our viewers a total solar eclipse viewing from their end. So we are joined here today by Leon from SciTech and he will be assisting us with the live stream from Exmouth Australia. So uh, let us welcome Leon. Good morning, everybody. Yes, my name is Leon. Thank you for having me. I'm the planetarium coordinator of the SciTech Discovery Centre in Perth. And I've travelled up here with a team of SciTech people to Exmouth. It took us three days to drive here and we're at the beautiful Ningaloo Function Centre here. It's beautiful and sunny outside and I'm really looking forward to being part of this stream with you. Alright, so thank you Leon for uh, introducing. So um, before we start here, I want to um, address the live stream that you will be seeing over here. All right, now this will be streaming from the uh, Jinjin Gravity Discovery Center and Observatory in Australia. All right, so they are they have very kindly provided us with the live stream from Australia itself. So this is what the uh, this is what the viewers from Australia will be seeing. All right, and this is what the audience will be seeing as well. So they will be observing a total solar eclipse. Right, whereas in Singapore we'll only be observing a partial solar eclipse. Hmm. Okay, so before we carry on, all right, let us just um, let us just enjoy the view from Australia okay, while we get all our stuff ready inside the observatory. Before we even start discussing about the eclipse in detail, uh, we'd like to invite two very distinguished individuals who have enabled this live stream to happen. Let us welcome our very first speaker, the Chief Executive of Science Centre Singapore, Associate Professor Lim Kit Ming. Professor Lim, please. Well, uh, good morning everybody and uh, thank you for joining us on this live stream. I'm not really a speaker, I'm just here to uh, welcome you to this uh, joint hybrid Solar Eclipse, literally hybrid because we are now live streaming from Singapore together with um, uh, Australia, uh, made possible to SciTech Perth. SciTech is a science centre in, in Perth and is a good friend of ours. Uh, so I'm very thankful for the team that we could come together to make this happen. Hybrid for hybrid solar and hybrid because we are also hybridising our efforts uh, from Singapore as well as from SciTech Australia. I also want to uh, make a special acknowledgement to my counterpart, uh, that is the CEO of SciTech, Dr. John Chappell. Uh, I haven't got a chance to meet you in person yet, but I look forward to interacting with you and learning from you because SciTech has been a strong partner in our Science Centre agenda and Science Centre network, especially in Asia Pacific. And uh, I want to thank the team uh, the team that make this possible, including Jinjin Observatory and the Gravity Discovery Centre, who provided the live stream. 
and uh, a very special thanks to uh, JTSI, the Department of Jobs, Tourism, Science and Innovation, uh, the government department uh, that supports both SciTech and Jinjin Observatory. So thank you, thank you for this strong support and partnership. Unfortunately, in the Singapore side, uh, we are facing a washout. It's literally raining dogs and cats and uh, we can't see anything at all. The, the thick rain clouds is masking everything. So thankfully, we have the clear blue sky in, in, in uh, uh, we call it down under uh, in, in, in Australia. Uh, hopefully, our people can really witness the spectacular total solar eclipse through the live stream. And meanwhile, we just hope that our sky will clear up, which uh, looking up unlikely. Nonetheless, we'll continue with this hybrid solar eclipse. And once again, thank you all for all, especially who are tuning in to view this. I was told that even as far as China, people are looking into this uh, phenomena uh, through this live stream. So SciTech, thank you again. Jinjin Observatory, thank you again. And uh, Gravity Discovery Center, thank you again. And thank you, JTSI. Have a pleasant day and may we continue to be inspired by looking up, looking to the sky and may astronomy guide us in how we understand the universe and understand ourselves more. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Lee, for the address. So our next speaker is the Chief Executive Officer of SciTech, Dr. John Chappell. Dr. John, please. Hello, everyone. Um, we're calling in from Exmouth today. Uh, Exmouth is located about 1,300 kilometres north of Perth. Normally it has a population of about 3,000 people, but at the moment there's about 20,000 people in the town. And it's like a a huge science astronomy festival. It's just fantastic. Um, this is actually the traditional owners of this land, are the uh, Jinigudura people who've lived here for tens of thousands of years. So I'd just like to acknowledge them as the custodians of the land that we're on today. Um, we're really excited to be working with the Singapore Science Centre and the Jinjin Gravity Discovery Centre and Observatory to bring you this feed today. Um, we've got our own telescope set up here we're just taking a few snapshots it's a pretty pretty basic setup but it's it's good to know that you don't need high-end equipment to be able to um to photograph an eclipse uh, just a simple uh, entry-level telescope with a camera and a good quality sun filter um, is all that you need um, so we hope you enjoy today uh hope you get a lot a lot out of it um, we're certainly having a blast here it's a beautiful clear sky I know it's raining in Singapore, and you might not get to see the sand eclipse that you have there, but um, hopefully the live stream from Exmouth will make up for it. So uh, enjoy. It's a pleasure to be working with you all. Um, hope you have a fantastic morning. Thank you, Dr. John, for his address. So um, before we carry on, right? although in Singapore it's a little bit difficult to view the solar eclipse now, right? but we just need to give a word of warning for everyone on this stream who is watching, right? how can we safely um, view the eclipse? So first and foremost, please do not look into the sun directly without any protection. Right? Sunglasses or solar films are not enough to view the solar eclipse safely. So what you will need is a solar filter just like the one that uh, Jackson has over here, right? So this is a special film that you can put over your eyes, like a pair of sunglasses, right? So that will cut out most of the light from the sun, right? All our telescopes, okay, they are used to watch the solar eclipse today, are also equipped with a similar solar filter, right, to cut out most of the light. And that's exactly what you are seeing from the stream now. So this is from um, Australia, and it's probably it's definitely with a telescope that's equipped with a solar filter to safely look at the sun. 
Right. So, uh, let us get started with the stream. Yeah, let us get started. So, um, before we even talk about the eclipse today, so um, just tell us more. Maybe Ming and Leon can answer this. Could you tell us more about the solar eclipse that's happening today and why it's significant? So, um, this eclipse, right? Basically, is um, what you're seeing is the sun. It's mm. getting covered by um, the moon. Right, and why is it significant? I, I mean, I think to me, um, the most significant thing about this is that we are actually able to predict the um, path of the eclipse. We're actually able to predict when, down to the very minute, uh, when the eclipse will happen. So we know for a fact that later on at eleven twenty-seven, right, it will be um, a totality in Australia side, and in Singapore, the maximum will be at 11.55. We know all this for a fact because we are able to predict them with complex mathematical equations down to the minute when the eclipse will happen. I think um, that is in itself a very big feat for um, science in general. Leon, what do you think? Could you have, what do you think, um, why is the most significant thing about this eclipse for you? What I think is that the rarity of the eclipse makes them just that so much more wonderful. And so for all of the people who have traveled to see the eclipse here in Exmouth, or people who are live streaming it, it is that really life changing moment where, as you've just said, Ming, uh, that science can predict this sort of stuff and we can travel all the way over here and we can experience this once in a lifetime experience. And if that's what it takes to get more young people turned on and switched into the world of science, then for me, that's what makes this eclipse very special. Uh, I also think that, uh, especially being in Western Australia, of course, we have to travel very, very far to get here. It's very so uh, it, this is the first eclipse that I've ever seen. It's probably the first eclipse that many uh, locals have ever seen as well. And uh, given that they only occur every few hundred years in any given location, I think this is very special for the people of Exmouth and all the people who have traveled here and uh, it's really going to be fantastic for everybody here. Mm. Thank you for your input, Leon. So can you tell us more about how eclipses form? Maybe. How yeah. an eclipse yeah. forms, all right? So um, what we're seeing today is a solar eclipse. So the sun is being blocked by the moon and actually slowly, slowly you can see that this black shadow that's covering over the image, that is the moon that is covering the sun. So actually I have with me uh, two balls, all right? This will represent the um, sun and moon. Oh, no, sorry, the moon and the earth. Right. So, just can imagine if you are the sun, okay. bright star that you are. Right. So, over here, this white one, this is the moon. Right. And over here, this blue one, this is um, the earth. Right. So, as they line up this way, mm -hmm. and the light from the sun is being blocked by the moon. Right. This will cast a shadow on the earth, and that creates a solar eclipse. Right, because from Earth, when you're looking outwards to the sun, right, the moon is coming in between and blocking that, blocking that light. Right, that is a solar eclipse. Right, okay. but a lunar eclipse is different. The lunar eclipse is the opposite way around. So the lunar eclipse, the Earth is in between the sun and the moon. Right, and when the Earth moves in and casts a shadow on the moon, right, from Earth we look out, we see the moon being covered by a shadow. That's our shadow, the shadow from um, the Earth. Right, so that is a lunar eclipse as compared to a solar eclipse. But um, today's eclipse is a little bit more special, right? Uh, it's called a hybrid solar eclipse. Maybe Leon can explain to us what is so special about a hybrid solar eclipse today. Yeah, absolutely. A hybrid eclipse is one that looks quite different depending on where you are within that path of totality. So as Meng has just described, over the course of the day, the moon will move across the face of the sun and that will cast a shadow across the path of the earth. And that is called the path of totality. And it actually starts, it started an hour or so ago in the Indian Ocean. However, if you were out on a boat deep in the west of the Indian Ocean, you would have seen the moon cover the sun, but peeking around the edge of the moon on all sides would be a ring of sunlight. And that is called an annular total eclipse because the, uh, an annulus is a scientific term for a ring, and the moon has not completely blocked all of the sun. However, because we are here in Exmouth, literally the curvature of the Earth puts us closer to the moon. And as a result, it looks bigger in the sky and is able to completely cover the moon, uh, the sun, sorry, and that gives us totality. 
And so a hybrid eclipse is an eclipse like this, where on different parts of that path of totality, you will see either an annular eclipse at the beginning or the finish, and somewhere in the middle, you will see totality. And these are exceedingly rare. Usually solar eclipses are either annular or total. Uh, however, this one that we're experiencing today starts as an annular eclipse, moves into a total solar eclipse here in Exmouth and across the northeast of the Indian Ocean and into Indonesia. And then by the time the eclipse finishes this afternoon, it will be back to an annular eclipse. And these are exceedingly rare. They only happen about once every 10 or 15 years. I think there are only seven of them in the last 100 years. So that's uh, why this total and this, an sorry, this partial, this hybrid eclipse <laughs> is so special. <laughs> we got there in the end. <laughs> Almost, went through all three of them. So um, in Singapore, we had an annular solar eclipse that was um, in 2019 on Boxing Day. And there was a very big crowd over here at the Science Center Singapore. So for us, that's when we saw that, that ring of fire, right? Um, that, was, that was a very interesting um, sight for us to see, right? Any other question? Okay, so um, over here, why not, why not you ask this? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm just uh, wondering as like someone who knows very, um, as a non-expert, like how rare are eclipses generally? And like, um, how long do they last? Like how observably, <laughs> yeah. Leon, why not you try? Why not, can you answer that? <laughs> Certainly. Well, as Meng described before, we can actually predict in advance using our mathematical models. And it turns out eclipses themselves are quite common, two to five times a year, depending on the orbit of the Earth and the Moon. It's solar eclipses we're talking about here. However, they happen; they could happen anywhere on mm. Earth. So the chances of the eclipse happening where you live is actually a lot lower. It's exceedingly rare, maybe every one to 300 years, depending on where you live. I like to think of it as a bit like winning the lottery. <laughs> Someone will win the lottery, but the chances of it being you are very, very small. And uh, so here this year is Exmouth's turn. In uh, five years' time, there will be another total solar eclipse in Australia. It won't be in Exmouth, though. It'll pass a bit uh, further north and down to the southeast. Uh, so common. Oh, you got cut. Oh, so I guess we kind of lost connection from Exmouth over there. Now, um, he was mentioning how rare an eclipse is in an area. So, um, for those of you who are watching in Singapore, all right, um, the next big one, the next annular solar mm -hmm. eclipse, if I remember correctly, will be in February 28, uh, 2063. All right, so that's when the next big one will happen in Singapore. All right, so. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll still be around for that. <laughs> that's, for <laughs> but the that's, for, that's for the kids viewing today. Maybe your grandkids, you'll be able to watch the next big annular solar eclipse in Singapore itself. Okay. But I think just now you're mentioning um, how long does an eclipse last? Mm. How long will today's eclipse last? As in when the moon first enters into the disk of the sun, uh, how long will that last? And until when? Yes, yeah, so here here in Exmouth, when totality occurs, we are expecting 58 seconds of darkness, which is actually quite short for an eclipse. Uh, the length of totality can vary from quite short, about a minute, which is what we're experiencing today, up to seven to eight minutes for the longest. Uh, the, the length of... <laughs> yes, connection's getting a little <laughs> bit choppy up and down. Okay. But anyway, while you're looking on the screen now, all right, I can explain that. So what you're seeing now is just the path of eclipses that will be happening soon, right? Uh, the orange, uh, the orange paths, these will be annular solar eclipses that will go across, right? So the next one that's going to happen is in October. I can't remember the exact date of in October, but it will be the one that's going across the entirety of North and South America. That will be an annular solar eclipse, right? And if I understand the graph, the, the picture correctly, the, bl the darker blue half that should be a total solar eclipse. Yes, uh, yes. Sorry, um, Leon, you were mentioning about the, um, the, the length of totality before you were cut off. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Uh, yes, so if the moon is very close to the Earth during totality, you'll have a very long eclipse because the moon looks larger in the sky and can block the sun for longer. 
However, if Moon is at the apogee, which is its furthest point from Earth during an eclipse, uh, then it will be smaller in the sky, and as a result, it will not cover the, song, the sun for as long, and as a result, the eclipse will be shorter, and we're getting quite a short eclipse at the moment. I'm quite curious, like, uh, are they, are solar eclipses usually observable without specialised equipment? I know, like, for example, like, Australia can experience total darkness, but not in Singapore, I think. Uh, no, no. So, um, there's only one point in a solar eclipse where you can um, observe it without equipment, and that is when it's totally covered, uh. that totality period. So just now Leon mentioned the 58, second, 58 seconds of totality, you can observe the sun without mm. specialized equipment. Right? But other than that, it is definitely not wise to do so. Okay. So um, coming from a biological standpoint, right? so uh, my training is in biology, right? so why is it not safe to look at the sun um, with, without proper equipment? right? Because the sun does not just put out normal white light, it puts out a huge spectrum of light, um, X-ray to infrared, and some of these lights, are, some of these spectrum is quite damaging to us, right? Especially you know, um, ultraviolet ray, ultraviolet radiation will cause all your sunburns and damage to your eyes and whatnot. So if you were to look at the sun without um, protection, let's say with just a pair of sunglasses, your eyes will perceive it as dark and then your, the, the pupil in your eye will expand to make it look to, to allow more light to come in right? because technically it's darker. But all these invisible um, radiation that's going in, all this ultraviolet light still enters your eyes and now with sunglasses on, you actually make it easier for ah. the ultraviolet light to get into your eyes and it will damage your eyes. And there is no pain receptors at the back of the retina, right? You won't feel pain. You will only feel it maybe um, a few hours later on when you maybe there there could be spots of blindness in your eyes. So terrible. so please do not look at the sun without any specialized equipment. Yes. So right now um, I'm holding up here my eclipse glasses, yes. and uh, you'll notice every time I turn to look, I put them on. I take a quick look. I think that looks looking pretty beautiful, and then I look away, and then I take them off. Don't try and do it half and half. Make sure they're on. Then we turn and look, turn away, and take them off. Right, this is just to make sure that you don't accidentally kind of look into the, the sun, right? Yeah. So now the sun is it's pretty much a crescent now, right? It's, um, yeah. it's really beautiful, right? But just now, there were a few dots. I think it was just oh, yeah. recently covered by the moon. Um, could you explain to us what those, what those dots were on the sun? I'm not sure whether you could use could you still see them now? Yep. Yeah, I was looking at the sun yesterday <laughs> through these as well, and I saw a few of those. And they are sunspots. That's what you're seeing there, those little dark areas. They are areas where the sun's magnetic field is concentrated, and it suppresses the plasma at the surface of the sun. And so as a result, that part of the sun is a little bit cooler than its surroundings. And as a result, it doesn't glow as brightly and looks quite dark compared to the brightness of the rest of the sun. And even though they look quite small on the surface of the sun, even those little tiny dots might be the size of Mars or even wow. Earth. They really are enormous. And uh, when those magnetic field lines eventually uh, break, you can get solar flares and uh, bursts of coronal mass ejection, things like that, uh, curling around. You may even see during totality uh, the prominences where the filaments of plasma follow the magnetic field from sunspot to sunspot. Uh, but uh, that's what you'll be seeing there on the sun. I can't see any at the moment, but I definitely got a good look at them yesterday. Yeah. We'll look forward to totality where we can actually see the the, the prominences that you were mentioning uh, just now. Okay, so um, here in the Science Centre, we actually can use a specialised solar telescope, which we will pop on later on. We can see more details on the surface of the sun, but right now I think you guys are just using a neutral density um, filter because it's just it's just a clear image of the sun. Okay, so uh, any other questions that you might want to ask as a lay person about, about the sun or yeah. the solar eclipse? Yeah, sorry, just to clarify. So are the sunspots pockets or are they like created atop the sun surface? I'm like, just curious about that. Uh, they are at the surface of the sun, or rather the photosphere, which is the part where the light of the sun comes from. They don't so much dip down into the sun like a, like a okay. crater. They are just regions where it is cold. There may be some uh, 
elevation mm. differences, but it's not like we're seeing thousands okay. of kilometers deep into the sun or tens of thousands. Right. So regarding the prominence, so that's like the that the done the fiery thing that we usually see in images of the sun. Ah yes, yes. So if you were to see your your typical um, image of the sun, right, you sometimes see arcs across the surface uh -huh. or on the surface. Yes, those are the prominences that just what Leon was was mentioning. So we can see more of it later on when we pop on our um, solar solar telescope. But uh, those are just across the entire surface. And oh, the sun is currently in a very active state. So if I'm not mistaken, I think the sun goes through about an 11 year cycle. Mm -hmm. So there are, periods, uh, there are periods in this 11 year cycle where it's um, very active, which, which is what we are at now. Right? And then it dips down to a very quiet period. So now we are actually seeing quite a lot of sunspots recently on the sun and a lot of activity on the sun. Whereas um, four or five years ago, the sun was quite clean, mm. uh, almost like a clean egg yolk because oh. there's not much dots on the sun. Mm. Yes. Oh, um, those solar flares that you're mentioning, are those the, the flares that create um, what's the, the auroras that we get to see on Earth? Yeah, you're absolutely right. The auroras that we see on Earth are caused by material ejected from the sun and it travels 150 million kilometres uh, to the Earth, where well, it travels in all directions and it happens to be, if Earth happens to be in the way, Yes, it is that material from the sun is deflected by Earth's magnetic fields to the North and the South Pole. And sometimes it can break through the magnetic protection and sort of ionize the upper atmosphere of our Earth. And that's what causes it to glow. And of course, when we're standing on the ground and we see the atmosphere glowing beautiful greens and reds, we call that an aurora. But what we're really seeing is the intimate and beautiful connection between the Earth beneath our feet and the magnetic field that it generates. And that interacting with the sun 150 million kilometers above our heads and that all starts from these magnetic outbursts from the sun and charged plasma traveling across space they really are one of the most beautiful phenomena in nature nature sorry almost uh, perhaps as beautiful as the solar eclipse have, have you seen one in australia before or is it possible to see it in australia it is possible to see in australia they are they have to be very strong if you want to see them in australia um, they are concentrated around the poles and because, of course, there's not much land mass around the South Pole, unless, of course, you are in Antarctica, it's hard to get close to the South Pole to see the auroras. But sometimes during uh, particularly energetic outbursts from the sun, those auroras can uh, spread further north. And there, even just uh, within the last month or two, there's been a lot of uh, excitement because the auroras have been visible from almost as far north as Perth, definitely on the south coast of Western Australia. There have been lots of sightings of aurora in the last six weeks and uh, I hope to look, we look forward to seeing more. Wow, the sun is really active these few days, huh? This, this whole period, yeah. yeah, I guess it's really in that, the peak of the solar activity. Yeah. So, um, how, how's the viewing like right now at Exmouth? Because I only see you. <laughs> <laughs> it's really quiet, actually. We are right in the middle of Exmouth, and I'm guessing most people have vacated the premises to go downtown to the official viewing area. Would we be able to pan the camera? <laughs> like behind me, you might see there is a park, and there's maybe 10 or 12 camper vans set up, and uh, people are sitting down. There's lots of cameras. They're all set up in the shade so they don't get burnt. We are at the function centre, as I said. There's lots of tables and chairs set up for uh, what I'm assuming was going to be hundreds of people. We're actually uh, some of the only people here at the moment. I'm thinking everybody's probably having a nice day in their backyard uh, because it doesn't really matter where you are in Exmouth. Uh, we will all get totality. But we've got this nice, beautiful grassy area here, which maybe we'll have some people uh, come and sit down and set up a picnic. We've got about half an hour to totality, so I'm predicting we might get a few more people showing up very shortly. Half an hour to totality, right? Yeah. So for us in Singapore, it's just starting if we could. <laughs> Open <it>. if, we, <laughs> if we could see it, um, <laughs> the eclipse would just be starting. All right. So, um, so in Singapore, we're just going to be facing what we call a partial solar eclipse mm -hmm. because um, Singapore is um, not very near <laughs> where the path of totality is, which is across Australia, right? So we're quite far out, okay? So we're only facing about a 15% coverage because the shadow expands out 
from Australia, uh, from Exmouth outwards this way. Singapore is just at the very edge where we'll only see about 15% of the sun being covered. Okay, so we only see a partial eclipse, whereas mm -hmm. on that side we see a total solar eclipse. This is purely because uh, of the location mm -hmm. of where Singapore is. And again, Singapore is only going to experience a 15%, not as much, even more than what we currently are seeing right now from the live stream. But still, 15% is quite an impressive sight, uh, especially in Singapore where we don't see much um, activity at all. Mm. Right? As I mentioned, the last, the last big one was in 2019, but there were previous solar eclipses which were all in very bad timings. Um, sunset, sunset, yes. So we couldn't, this is the last, this is the second one we could have seen since, uh, the next one we could have seen since 2019. Yes. So is the path of totality always changing? Or yes, of? yes. So just now remember you saw that mm -hmm. map that um, they put up. So the path of totality always changes across um, the whole world, mm. right? It's kind of random. Oh, it's not really random, but I'm sure there's a there's a there's an equation to that, and said we can predict where we can where we can see the eclipse. But it happens all across the world, mm -hmm. right? Depending on where um which part of the Earth is currently facing um, the sun, right, and where where the moon is. Yep. So uh, it depends on um, when it is. Could be an annular solar eclipse. Could be a total solar eclipse. Right. But just lucky today, it's at Exmouth. So we still got quite a while before the um, before totality, and it is it is quite a sight to see it from from even from the screen. It's still quite a sight to see. I can't I cannot imagine how it's like on on site. Oh, I, I remember the last time when we were doing this. Mm -hmm. Right about now ish, I think it's starting to get a little bit more cooling. Right, it's not as blistering hot as it was. Is it is that what you are um, experiencing now? Bang on time, I was just about to say. Oh. It is getting a little bit cooler. It was much hotter this morning. It's not quite dark yet, but uh, it's definitely getting shady, a little bit cooler. You can still certainly drive around safely, uh, and it's still, you wouldn't want to be rugging up, putting jumpers on, but it's definitely not as blisteringly hot as it mm. was before. I would say we might be at two or three degrees cooler, oh. and I'm hoping that'll go down a bit more as we keep getting into yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. But you'll notice off screen, I am still applying sunscreen <laughs> to the, the one half of my face that is facing the sun. Oh dear. <laughs> Safety first. Yes, indeed. So for whoever, whoever is um, looking at the sun now, remember safety, safety glasses and all, and oh, protection, sunscreen, sunscreen protection. Yeah. So if you can cover yourself up, make sure you have you put tons and tons of uh, sunblock on yourself, Leon. You don't want to go back red at the end of this uh, eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> just have half a red oh, face. Yeah. <laughs> right. So um, we have still quite a bit to wait. So why not we just um, chill a bit, and um, we'll come back at around eleven twenty. Right. Enjoy the sun. Enjoy the sights. Um, just relax, I guess, because the sun's gonna be there. Just watch the sun, right? Right. So we'll see you back. In 1120? Looking forward to it.
<clears throat> Hello, we're back. <laughs> yes. So um, I understand that. Oh yes, oh, the stream yes, is back. Totality. Yes. So I understand that um, the sun's almost covered on your side. How how is it like Leon to be almost dark? I see it, it is quite significantly dark yeah. on your side, isn't it? It is. It's noticeably different. Even in the last ten minutes, it's probably dropped another five, six degrees, and uh, it's getting dark. You can still walk around without torches and everything like that, but it feels like an afternoon sunset. It definitely doesn't feel like eleven twenty in the morning. But you said that you keep saying that it's getting dark. Will it be completely dark in where you're at? Yeah, thirty exactly. I believe it will. When totality occurs. We will go completely dark just for that 58 seconds. We should be able to see some of the very brightest stars in the sky. They will stand out against the black, the background. And uh, yeah, it will go completely dark. I'm not sure what you'll be able to see on camera with me standing in front of it. <laughs> we'll find out. Yes. So I understand that uh, as we approach totality, there are a few kind of phenomena that would uh, appear kind of around the sun because of the moon. I'm not exactly an expert on this field, so uh, maybe We'll give you some time to explain to us um, what what are we going to see, what are we going to expect for totality? Yeah, absolutely right. So the two main things to watch out for before totality are what are called Bailey's beads and the diamond ring effect. And they're both due to the fact that the moon is not perfectly smooth. There are mountains and craters all over the surface of the moon. And so as the moon just about blocks out the sun, the last rays of sunlight will poke through those craters and it will look like the, the, the all these little beads around the outside of the moon. And it's the sun, the last remnants of the sun peeking through those craters and the, the valleys on the moon and that light still gets its way to Earth. And then just before totality, all the other craters have uh, been moved out of the way and that last little crater, there'll be this beautiful flaring effect through the through the last valley and it will look like this beautiful ring of light with a flare on top looks like a diamond ring and that's called the diamond ring effect and both of those are due to the fact that the moon is not perfectly smooth and after totality we'll see the same thing in reverse on the other side we will see the diamond ring appear and then as the moon keeps moving Bailey's beads will appear and then the sun will be back and the moment has passed however of course during totality we'll be able to see the sun's corona surrounding the tenuous outer atmosphere of the sun, that hot plasma at millions of degrees, only visible from Earth during a total solar eclipse. That's what we'll be able to see during those 58 seconds of totality. And you mentioned that you will be able to see the stars um, in the background, right? I'm assuming because with the sun kind of light covered, the, the, the starlight is able to come through and we'll be able to see the stars in midday, am I right? Yeah, that's right. It's definitely not going to be like you're standing out at midnight in the darkest part of the night, but some of the brighter stars will be uh, bright enough to see through the, the glare of the, the, the sun around. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing those. I should be able to name a few of them. We'll see how we go. And uh, But uh, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what to do. I'm just hoping to see a couple of stars. I'd like to draw your attention, if we may, we're going to pan the camera around, mm -hmm. because there's also something a very uh, not well understood effect called uh, shadow uh, shadow uh, I can't remember the name but I've got a white sheet set up on the ground here and during those last moments before totality and the first moments after it what we might expect to see is very wispy shadows which we think is from the last remnants of sunlight atmosphere and we should get some beautiful wispy wobbly shadows all over this white sheet so I've got a very jerry-rigged camera set up here and I'm gonna try and film them they may work, it may not, we'll find out. I'm gonna set my camera up now, just off, if you don't mind. We, as we wait for all of this to happen, right, um, we are eagerly awaiting the solar eclipse that's happening, that's gonna happen in Australia, right? Definitely. Yeah. Um, the stream is not showing us that just yet, it, so we're gonna wait for um, the stream to return, but I, I've never seen a, a total solar eclipse before. The, the closest I've seen is, is an annular. Where were you, uh, Jashen, last, in 2019, during the annular solar eclipse? Great question. I enrolled in university. You were, on, yes. on the day itself? 
Which date was it again? 26 December 2019. Oh, no. <laughs> so you, did you manage to catch the solar eclipse? Oh, actually I didn't because... Uh, so it's showing in Singapore? Yes. I was in Germany. Oh, okay, no wonder. All right. Yes, ah, as the stream is back. Yeah. So right now the sun is almost completely covered by mm. the moon. Right, you can clearly see even the skies in Exmouth is it's getting a little bit darker and darker. Right. So soon we'll see that Bailey's Beats effect that I think Leon mentioned just now. And then hopefully the diamond ring. But the sun is really a very thin crescent now. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. go ahead, go ahead. Right, I think even the stream itself is um, going back and forth, back and forth to show off this effect. So we are going to cut up and down a bit. Three more minutes. Three more minutes? Yep. Oh, yeah. Very soon. There we go. Even in Singapore, the last time was a legit ring around the sun. You you oh. don't see you don't see almost this dark. It's almost black. Yeah, we could tell from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> So, so maybe while we're waiting, um, I did mention that you, it is safe to take off your glasses during totality when um, the, the moon blocks out the sun. Um, well, it's safe, right? Like, I, I'm told it's safe. Many, many people have told me that it's safe. I haven't tried it out because I have never seen a total eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Okay. Mm. But right now it's really just the final sliver of light from from the sun. Any possible any possibility of the those Bailey's beats? Or you might be seeing it. We might not be able to see it from this from this camera stream itself. Mm. You can see it's very dark on yeah. this side already. Yeah. Um, one last minute to totality. Oh yes. Now we can get on. Oh! Oh, oh. <laughs> oh wow, you can really see yeah. those edges. No, and it's dark on your side for sure. Yeah. Really dark. Yes, yes, we can. Oh, amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we can even see it from the stream itself. Yeah. It's one on the side, one right above, right on the top. So that's the corona. Is that the prominences that you're talking about? Or are they are they the same thing? Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, me. Oh, I'm oh, a diamond ring. That's a diamond ring that we are seeing from the stream. Oh. oh. That's 58 seconds of totality. Yep. Oh, that's a. Uh, 
That's magnificent. That that is amazing. Um, one day I will go and chase the eclipse. One day, one day I will do that. <laughs> so when's the next time? When's the next eclipse? Yeah. Um, the next eclipse is uh in October, as I said, mentioned, mm -hmm. um in um America, South America, uh, North America, mm. and South America. So no, I'm not going there. Somewhere when it's nearer to, nearer to this part of the world, maybe I will I will go and chase uh, the eclipse. I really want to see that. Uh, on site. Mm. So just to explain what we saw, so why was there such a big giant flash, mm -hmm. right? So right now the filters are back onto the onto the telescope, mm. right? Of the um, of the uh, telescope that is being used to look at the sun, right? Just now when uh, there was a big giant flash, that was uh -huh. when the filters came off, ah. because with the filters on, you cannot see everything that you just saw, oh. because. Um, the filters were blocked out all the light. Yeah, right? okay. So that moment where it flashed uh -huh. and we all wow, no, yeah. we all explained. That was when um, probably the lenses, the lenses, the lens ah, came off. Right, the filter came off. So everything that we were seeing then was pure light coming through into the telescope. No filter. Hashtag no filter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, <laughs> so now we're actually seeing the sun coming back out. Hmm. So it's gonna go away again, right? Ah. And just gonna go out to the other side. It's like. Legit long forward to see the whole thing in reverse. What we just experienced. How is it like over there? Experiencing it in person. <laughs> it's already getting warmer. <laughs> uh, <basically. laughs> it's very bright already. That uh, that brief moment of darkness was very very brief, and uh, it's still comfortable. I don't need to put more sunscreen on just yet. But I reckon within ten minutes, mm. we will be back to where we were this morning. Very bright, full bright. Uh, and uh, sweating and hot, <laughs> but right now there's still just another couple of moments where we can enjoy this very thin crescent of the sun peeking around from the side of the moon. But it's back bright enough; you could easily drive around without your headlights on. You don't need torches. That's how you know. Just even such a small percentage of the sun is able to illuminate our Earth uh, so brightly. Yes. Um, did you manage to get what we were trying to get? The wispy light things that you were you were setting up just now. Oh, I haven't checked my footage. <laughs> Let's go find out. <laughs> right, we'll take a look at that later on. But yes, all oh, the sun is really coming out. So this effect, this this whole this whole pass was actually quite fast. Within the past like five minutes, mm -hmm. we would see the moon going in and out of the disk of the sun. Right. So, uh, wow, sun is really coming out. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's still raining here in Singapore. We can't uh, kind of show up, show off what we can see. We're gonna go take a look outside in a moment, mm. right? Just to check on the on the sun. We might be able to open up the dome, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to see. Yes, <laughs> we'll, we'll take time. a look. Yeah. It, yes. Yes. I I'm looking out. Stopped. Yeah, the rain, the rain has stopped, stopped, but the the clouds are still pretty, pretty uh, strong in Singapore. Okay. Pretty thick. We got up. Yeah. Did you did you manage to? Get yeah, I can confirm. Did? Yeah, they're not very bright, and they're, but they are definitely there. If you know what you're looking for, unfortunately, I can't really hold my camera up to the camera. But on our white sheet, we did see it's almost like someone was waving a hairbrush in front, just very wispy shadows zipping across the surface of our bright sheet. The reason we used a sheet is so that they would stand out, something dark against something bright. And uh, they were caused by just very small variations of wind in the atmosphere, interfering with what little sunlight there was, casting very small, very tenuous shadows. And I only got a few seconds of them, but I'm glad I did. You can always send it over to us and we can we can stream it yeah. up on maybe. Oh, one thing I wanted to check or one thing I wanted to see whether you could produce. Um, could, is it possible right now to see the shadow of the sun as a crescent through like almost like a pinhole, a pinhole camera um, setup? Or do you already have one on? I think we can do yeah. that. Let me, would you be able to give us a couple of minutes while we prepare one? Oh, and uh, I'm sure we can find something. Hmm. So while Leon is preparing that, let me explain what, what I just mentioned. So a pinhole camera basically mm -hmm. allows you to uh, observe the sun, not by looking at the sun, but looking at a projection of the light that comes through. So during eclipses, right, when you have a hole, right, uh, a small hole or a large hole in any case, when you cast a shadow, it won't be a perfect circle. It will oh, be, nice. it will follow that crescent of which you're seeing now. Oh. So that's another safe way of observing the sun instead of looking directly. Right? Instead of looking directly at the sun, right? Looking 
directly at it, you can actually um, observe a projection mm. of the, of the um, light that's been cast from the sun. So it actually gives you a lot of um, different effects that we can oh. see. Mm -hmm. So different from the stream. Different from the ah, stream. So you will see, you will see, still see this crescent, uh -huh. but instead of through a, a glasses or not, you see it projected on the ground. Right, it's like a projection oh. method. Literally, a, a camera form of, of doing it. Right, it's called a pinhole camera in a sense. Have you done it before? Um, I haven't actually done it myself, but during the last eclipse, um, what happened during the totality when mm -hmm. it was a ring of fire, so so it was an annular eclipse, right? You could see um, all the shadow that be, that has been cast on the ground. They're all little donuts oh. because it follows that ring of which the I sun. Is. So it's little donuts all over the floor, right? You could find images um, from the twenty nineteen eclipse, just shadow little donuts all around the mm. ground. It's very cute, right? Of course, not physical donuts, but rings of light projected. Yeah, donuts. projected on the ground. So as mm. Leon sets up kind of um, a projection, we can actually um, just continue to observe the sun because this is something that we probably won't be able to see today at all in Singapore just because yeah, of the clouds. Yes. Yeah, okay. It's a very cloudy day. It is a very cloudy day. Right. Yeah. But um, I have prepared for myself later on a, a photo of which we have taken mm -hmm. a few days ago all right, of the sun and we can actually see um, some of those prominences and some of those um, filaments that Leon was mentioning just now. So we'll wait for Leon and his pinhole camera. And while that, just observe and enjoy, I guess. Yeah. Actually, I wonder how, like, we know this is a eclipse, but I wonder how people back in time interpreted these eclipses. Oh, um, yeah. definitely. Uh, I mean, you can imagine um, back then, mm -hmm. without understanding what's going on above you, and suddenly it becomes dark like this, yeah. right? You would imagine oh, maybe the world is ending, right? So yeah. um, this would occur enough times for people to recognize a pattern mm -hmm. and like maybe have mythologies or stories about it. Yeah. Um, many stories of uh, something is eating the sun, oh. right? I think um, I think it's the Chinese who have either a moon, uh, a dog or a wolf uh. that's that's eating up the sun. Uh, maybe a dragon somewhere in other mythologies. Yeah, I think so, Siberian wolves as well. Yes. Vampires, like a lot of mythological creatures. Yes. So depending on the culture. Yeah. Of course, we know that that's not what's happening, uh -huh. right? But uh, many superstitions or um, mythology, in a sense, would would attribute a certain event that's happening from an eclipse like this. Yeah. Cosmic catastrophe. catastrophe. Yeah. Yes. Oh, but I've heard that there's also like myths of creation because um a lot of mythologies put like the sun and moon as like a married couple. So uh from in some cultures I've heard that uh when an eclipse occurs, it's believed that more stars are born. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. that is the the rationale because as Leon mentioned, when the when the moon covers the mm -hmm. sun, um. The brighter stars actually get exposed out mm. from from when the when it becomes dark. So I won't be surprised if they say stars are actually kind of being born from mm. that situation. It is. It sounds very credible. Oh, oh and you, and Leon's back. back. I I'm ready. Yeah. Yes. Hello. <laughs> so for those of you who uh, haven't been able to get eclipse glasses, or if you're just out of town or anything like that, all I've got here is a piece of paper, and uh, on the floor here I have another bright piece of card, and a pen. And all I'm doing is poking holes in, and what I cast this, the sun is behind me, and I, I cast the shadow onto the page. You can see there, if we can focus the camera, I, I assure you, these are all shaped exactly like the sun you can see in your live stream. Oh, hang on, let me bring that forward a bit. Oh, wrong way. There we go. You can see some of them there. <laughs> the, and I'm just going to poke a couple of more. So you can see one, two, oh, they weren't very good holes, but you can see they don't need to be. <laughs> I'm working a mirror image. There we go. <laughs> oh, goodness. Where are you? Oh, there's, a, there's a time delay between what I'm seeing on the camera. There we go. A few more. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, so there's how you can view what's left of the eclipse without your safety glasses or anything like that. Just put it on the floor. Right. So for viewers, who um, are not able to uh, see the eclipse because you do not have safety glasses. This is just one method, very simple ghetto method of um, looking at the eclipse. <laughs> Punch a hole through a, a piece of paper and project that image on the floor. Right, so that's our method, a pinhole. 
can I draw your attention to something on the wall? I'm, oh, no, sorry, it's too far away. But on the wall of the building about 30 metres behind us, there is a decorative artwork with hundreds and hundreds of holes through the, uh, the artwork. And the shadow on the wall is look, like looking at 10,000 eclipses all at once. I can see lots of little crescents all over the place. I did send a photo through to the group chat. You might be able to get that on the uh, the stream. Some cheese wall, I guess you would call it. Yes, I would definitely. Oh, yes, that is beautiful. All right, I will put that up in a while. But that is, you're right, it kind of looks like cheese, isn't it? Yes. All right. <laughs> so uh, we want to ask, so Exmouth is pretty, um, in Singapore, we call it Ulu, which is out of the way and far, far away in the middle of nowhere. Um, how was the... How was the journey like from from Perth, Perth to Exmouth? Yeah. Oh, like <laughs> the Australia, right? You can see the the, mm. the the path of totality. So that dark yes. area, that's the shadow of the moon that's covering um, Australia. Mm. And if you imagine Australia like that, the top part up here, that oh, wow. Exmouth is. I see. Mm. Sorry, sorry, Leon. How was the journey from from um, Perth to Exmouth? Yeah, no, that's okay. That was a beautiful picture of Australia. Uh, the journey from Exmouth was, I think, the best way is eventfully uneventful. <laughs> we took three days to drive. We, You can do it faster if you want to, but we like to drive in, in short stints and only during the day. We don't want to be driving at mm. night. And we were hauling uh, several tons of equipment with us with the SciTech activation here. So our first day, we left from Perth on Sunday the 16th, so uh, five days ago, and we drove about 500 kilometres north to a town called Geraldton, uh, quite a large town. We stayed there for one night. We immediately left the next morning and drove another 400 kilometres to a town called Carnarvon. Carnarvon's very famous for its involvement uh, in the Apollo program. There's a, a tracking station up there and we actually attended an event at the Carnarvon Space and Technology Museum called Night at the Museum. Uh, and that was fantastic. Lots of people, I gave a talk there as well. And then the next day we drove up to Exmouth on Tuesday and again, that was about three, 400 kilometers. And one thing that's fascinating is when you're driving that truck and you go over the hill and you see the straight road to the horizon, and then you get to the end of the road and it, it continues to the horizon again, and again, and again, and again, there's just these long straight roads. The landscape is very flat, very dry, lots of shrubs, um, insects, birds, uh, very hardy landscape. And it's, it's really beautiful. Um, and it's quite fascinating to think Western Australia is this place where you can drive for three days and still be inside your own state. Uh, you know, most other places you drive for a few hours and you're in another country. And here we are up in uh, a very far northwest of, it's not even the furthest you can go, but of Western Australia. And the reason Exmouth even exists is because there's the beautiful reef here, Ningaloo Reef, and there's uh, whale sharks and lots of tropical wildlife here. And it's a great tourist destination here in uh, Western Australia. And that's why this town exists, this small coastal town of 2,000 people, or should I say right now, about 32,000 people. Oh. Wow. So I understand that you actually prepared a, a video for us about your entire journey across, is that right? All right, so... Uh, yes, we did. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I just dropped my headphones. We stuck a, a GoPro and a time-lapse on the front of one of our trucks, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully that video has made its way to you. We took a photo every five seconds, oh. and... Uh, the, those videos that we sent were only about a couple of hours of driving. So take those videos we sent, multiply them by about 10 times, and that was the full journey. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're actually going to play those, video, those videos for our audience. Our great uh, editor, Lydia, has actually stitched everything together into a two-minute um, montage of your whole entire journey across. So let's enjoy. Enjoy. G'day, it's Craig from SciTech here. Now Western Australia is a really large state and some of our citizens are up to 2,000 kilometres away from our science centre in Perth. So we have a fleet of over five vehicles where we take the STEM experience to the people. Even for the eclipse, we brought our science centre to the people of Exmouth 
So let's go check it out. So that was quite a video, quite a journey that you, you took over. It's true. Three okay. days. Three days, yes. Okay. So I got that, that photo of yours that you sent over to us. Okay, it should be it should be with with my tech team now. Is it possible to put it up? Ah. Yes. Yes, yeah, so this is that, that cheese wall that you were mentioning that's being projected. Right. So all that um all the little holes in the wall and all that all the, the projection from the soap, the sun itself. So it looks like, yeah, you're right, cheese. It is cheese. <laughs> and little U shapes everywhere. Crescent cheese. Yes. Okay, so um, we're going to go, we're going to actually take a look at the sun from Singapore. So again, um, in Singapore, unfortunately, as I look out of my observatory now, it is still very cloudy. So what I have prepared is a image of the image of the sun, right? This was taken uh, on Saturday, last Saturday, right? And this is uh, taken through a hydrogen alpha filter, right? So we have a specialized solar scope that is made purely to look at the sun. So many people ask, can I use this, this telescope to look at um, anything else? No, you can't, right? This telescope is purely made to look at the sun, ah. right? It has many layers of filters inside to cut out all the, all the bright light from the sun to only show you uh, this image that we're seeing mm -hmm. right now, okay, and it's even special because it has a very it has a unique filter called hydrogen alpha filter that gives you this red color or orange mm -hmm. color effect that you're seeing. Yeah, it looks right? different from the one in the stream just now. Yes, it looks very different from the one yeah. in the stream just now, because the one in the stream just now, as I mentioned, was using a neutral density mm -hmm. filter, probably right. So that only gives you kind of that orange red color. Uh, or, or whitish color with no details on top. Mm. You don't see any of these details that we are seeing. Okay, so let me just draw your attention to a few things. So if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the image, you see a few things poking out from oh, the side yeah. of the uh, sun. Do you remember what they're called? Mm. I don't know, but I know them as the dancy fiery things on the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Start to a P. Right, so those are the prominence. Uh, yeah, all right, exactly. so the prominences on the side of, mm. of the sun. All right, so they are actually kind of arcing out mm. from the surface. Okay, and that is when we're looking at it from the front, right? Mm. Because we're looking at the disc, so this is the side of the sun. If we look at the same thing, mm -hmm. but face on, right? Because the sun is a, is a ball, right? The sun is a ball. Where's my, where's my move? Right, so the sun is a ball. Right. So if you look at it from the side here, you see those little arcs fly out. But if you look at it straight on, okay, you see what we call filaments. Those are those lines that are going across the sun, the mm. big lines that are going across. So basically that ends as well as the big one that's on the side, those are the same thing. It's just that they are different kind of viewing angles from what we are seeing right now. What are the yellow pockets on the sun? Still? Yes. All the yellow pockets are areas of probably high activity. Ah, just now okay. mentioned, just now mentioned, um, you mentioned sunspots, right? So those could be those actual sunspots areas. Ah, right? I see. So you see, actually, you can actually see two spots right there at the top. Mm. Yes. So those are that is the sun on Saturday, right? So ah. if you take an image of the sun every day, you will see this. It's, uh, the sun is not a static mm. object. It spins. Ah. It moves. There are a lot of activities happening. So if we take a few shots every day, you can see that. 
some of these prominences will move, mm. they, will, they will grow, maybe get bigger, get smaller, the filaments itself will move around, kind of dancing across the sun. Mm. So this is kind of the image that uh, we will be able to see. Okay. However, right, um, again, no chance for it today, but if we could have seen the eclipse through this, you would have seen of also the moon kind of eating into, mm. eating into this disk of the sun. Right. So that is um, what we would see. So mm. right now, about now, would have been or would be the maximum eclipse or the maximum coverage in Singapore. So again, in Singapore, we're only getting a 15% coverage of uh, the sun, right? Just a small sector on the side. Mm. Okay. So just now, if you've been seeing our live stream and on the corner, there's a little artwork representation of kind of how much coverage the sun will have in Singapore. Okay. So uh, when's the next eclipse? In Singapore, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. it's 27 or 2027. Oh. Okay, I have to check on that. However, that eclipse is going to happen, I think, uh, at the end of the day during oh, sunset. sunset. So, so we won't be able, to, yeah. we won't be able to see it, <laughs> right? So there are, um, yes, that's the next kind of eclipse that we can see. But of course, lunar eclipses happen a lot mm. more often, right? So there will be a few lunar eclipses that will be sprinkled in between this period, uh, between. Uh, now and till then, right? So, uh, lunar eclipse, right? Just now I mentioned. The just now I mentioned the Earth casting, casting shadow onto the moon. Yes, right. So, uh, the whole night side, the whole night side would be able to see the lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipses are quite common. Hmm. Um, they do follow a solar eclipse. So usually they do come in a pair. So whenever there's a solar, there would be a lunar very soon. All right. So there is, I, if I'm not mistaken, there is actually a lunar eclipse that's coming up. We, we may not be able to see it, or it could be a very partial lunar eclipse. We mm. have to, we have to uh, check on that. All right. But they usually do come in a pair. Mm. So whenever there's a solar, there's a there's a lunar that's that's upcoming. So um, there should be a lunar that's coming up in a few years, but that's going to be in the wee hours of the night, mm. one two a.m. kind of thing. So. Uh, if you want to stay up the night, kids, if you want to stay up the night, that's a good reason to say, I just want to look at the lunar eclipse that's going to be upcoming. Okay. So, so shall we move into the Q&A section? Shall we move in? Yes. So we can get the yawn back on screen. <coughs> okay. So, um, what is going to happen now, we're going to go over to our Q&A. So mm -hmm. our tech crew has very good, very helpfully compiled for us a bunch of questions that everyone has been sending over to sending over to us. All right. Okay, so, so the right. first question is by Amit from Singapore. So their question is, will we be able to view the solar eclipse from Singapore in October? Ah, so uh, as I mentioned just now, the solar eclipse in October of 2023 mm -hmm. right, will be in America, north and south. So it's going to go across uh, Almost the entire uh, North America, mm -hmm. Canada is probably going to get it, get a bit. Uh, the United States is going to definitely get it. it. If I'm not mistaken, it's going to go through the entirety of Mexico. Mexico is oh. going to be a really good view. And then into South America. So it's going to be on the other side of the world. So if you want to view the solar eclipse, fly to Mexico. Right, fly to Mexico. <laughs> all right, you can go there yeah. to, to, to view the solar eclipse. Right, That will be an annular solar eclipse, not mm -hmm. a total solar eclipse, not like the one that we saw today. Yep. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the next question is by Dexter mm -hmm. from Singapore. Dexter asked, how do I see the solar eclipse when I don't have a special sunglass or telescope? Leon, why not? Um, why not you show us your pinhole camera again if it's possible? Oh, we can't hear. There's no sound from you. Okay. Hello, we'll try yeah, again. Yeah. Oh. Yes, if you don't have or uh, a telescope or any equipment like that, all you need is a piece of paper, another bright piece of paper on the floor, and a pen, and you just poke a bunch of holes into your piece of paper. They don't even have to be very good. You can see mine is not very good. Let the sun be over your shoulder and shine through the page, through those little holes, and on the ground, on your bright piece of paper, you'll be able to see an image of the sun. And as the moon moves in front of the sun, that image of the sun will get eaten up by the moon. And what you're seeing is basically a picture of the sun. 
So that's how you can do it if you don't have any equipment at all. Two pieces of paper and a pen, <laughs> and that's all there is. Amazing. Yeah. So, uh, Dexter, you could do that. So, so uh, the next question is from the Grade 2 class of the Canadian International School. Hello. Hello. Uh, so, why Hello. can the eclipse cause darkness and when, and especially when it's only a partial eclipse? Would you like to clarify that in me? Um, ah, okay. Yeah. So, um, in, so, why does it cause darkness, right? Definitely because uh, the sun is the provider of basically all the light that we have mm -hmm. right now. You go outside, it's bright, it's bright because it's of the sun. Okay, so when the moon covers that, it casts a shadow on top. It's, it's going to block out the sun just like how you want to put the shades on your window. So it's going to cause darkness, right? Um, in Singapore, however, right, it's not going to be very dark, okay, because uh, it's only a 15% coverage. So imagine if you only cover about 15% of your shades, right, of your window, right? It's Your, your room is still going to be bright yeah. because there's going to be a lot of light. It's just going to be bouncing out through into the rest of the room. Okay, so even though it's a partial eclipse, okay, um, it will get just that little bit darker, at least in Singapore, but in Australia, of course, what we saw just now, almost complete blackness, darkness, right? Your, your, your camera was black for a while. Yes. Mm. And can I just add to that, Meng, uh, where you can see from the live stream that the sun is still about 80 to 85% covered, and yet it is completely bright around here no need for torches car headlights so even just that a tiny amount of sun is enough hmm. to fully wash out the the ground the sun is very bright it is very it bright it is very bright yes. yes yes so the next question is from matilda of australia so uh she asks uh does the eclipse have the same effect on dogs and animals eyes as it does on humans Oh, okay. That's an interesting question. Yeah, correct. Right. Um, as far as I know... Uh, can you answer yeah. that, Ming? Yeah, that's your expertise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as far as I know, um, we do share similar... I mean, the eye is, 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 is they develop in a certain way to look for mm. light, right? So some eyes are more sensitive to UV, some eyes are not, all right? The research department, all right? Um, so the research department has uh, informed us, okay, that um, unlike us, we are very fascinated with the uh, solar eclipse. So uh, we being the curious creature that we are, uh, will tend to look up at the sky, at the sun. Okay? But um, most of these animals uh, may not or do not have that kind of curiosity in them or care at all if the sun moves away. So they may not be looking at the sun. Mm. Right? But it may affect them because again, light is just going to be scattered all around. It may look darker for them, all right. But I, as far as I know, no, I don't think um, it's too affect. It does affect them that much. Yes. Okay. Thank you, research department. Yes. Uh, thank you, Matilda, for the question. So the next oh, question. You can see some of the, uh, oh. On the stream just now, they were showing some of the kind of. Uh, yes, you can oh. see some. Of the, oh, the, that's the, the, the prominence from the site. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, so they went yeah. really close to the sun. You can show you. Yeah, they did. Leon, can you tell us more about what we are seeing right now? Oh, are you actually... Yeah, so... Sorry, I'm off camera. <laughs> what we are seeing is uh, plasma from the sun's outer atmosphere, and it is following a very intense magnetic field line uh, from the sun. And the sun doesn't really have a north pole and a south pole like the Earth does. Uh, there are sort of these regions of localized magnetism, the North Pole here, South Pole there, and the plasma in the outer atmosphere of the sun is following the, uh, the path of that field. And as it's doing so, where it's sort of getting away from the bright part of the sun, and we're seeing just the, the faint glow of that plasma as it is arcing along that magnetic field. And uh, that's what we call a province. Yeah. And uh, they, they are hard to spot, but you can see them there. And the one we're looking at there is probably two or three times the size of the Earth just to give you some sense of scale for how large these things are. Um, but yeah, glowing plasma, they're really, really beautiful. So I would say that, that the mouse cursor that's right there, now that's probably the size of the Earth, huh? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty good estimate. <laughs> yeah, so it's saying, hard to imagine unfathomably large the sun is. Yes, definitely. So what you're saying is like, it's, a, it's an entire arc, right? And this is just the beginning portion of the arc that goes into, I would say, space and back onto back onto the sun's surface, am I right? 
Yeah, that's right. So somewhere maybe off camera or uh, lost in the glare, that arc has a, a, a tail, so to speak, and uh, it's sort of curving all the way around. Maybe the entire arc is not filled with plasma yet, but there is definitely the, the magnetic field of the sun uh, that is curving around like that, and the, the plasma will expose that as it moves along the uh, along the field line. Wow, that's amazing. All right, so, sorry, let's get back to get the Q&A. So, Q &A. Where, where were we, sorry? So, yes, the next question is by Jehu from Perth, Australia. So, uh, Jehu asks, uh, are there places in the world that will never see a full eclipse, like x like... Okay, so uh, how about you just tell us more about um, for this particular eclipse, like um, which other regions experience partially or even fully? So um, the path of totality mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. goes through. I think uh, Leon mentioned start in the Indian mm -hmm. Ocean and goes up across um, Australia. Doesn't mm -hmm. I don't think the path of totality actually enters much of Australia. It's just mm -hmm. Exmouth, right? And then it goes into some parts of Indonesia, um, Papua mm -hmm. New Guinea, that will be experiencing. Um, an annular solar eclipse. So anywhere along that path plus out a bit, so you get your partial eclipse. Along that path, you get your annular and your and your total eclipse. So out of this whole shadow area, so they won't be seeing an eclipse, right? So I think the question was also: Is there anywhere that does not ever see yeah. a solar eclipse? Are there anywhere? Would, yeah, is there anywhere that will never see a solar eclipse? Mm. They are less common near the poles mm. because uh, the, the the moon is generally in closer in line above the equator, not perfectly above. But uh, yeah, you need to, if you're very high latitudes above seventy or eighty degrees, they are significantly less common. I don't know off the top of my head if there are any regions that never see an eclipse, but I think over the course of you know a hundred thousand years, everywhere on Earth will probably see an eclipse. But they're definitely much more common in the middle low to lower latitudes. Uh, but if you live in Antarctica permanently, you might be waiting a very long time to see one. Well, in Antarctica, then you get the uh, midnight sun as well as mm. um, yeah, and the aurora. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good enough. <laughs> get other phenomena. That's yes, not good enough. Yeah, just not eclipse. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the next question is by Mansua from Zambia. So uh, he asked again, uh, how long a solar eclipse is. How long is it? So like yeah, it's, how would it? Okay, so so okay. yeah, it, yeah, as mentioned just now, it varies between mm -hmm. eclipses. So there are some eclipses that can be really long. Mm -hmm. There are some that can be really short. So today's one is only about fifty-eight seconds, mm -hmm. right? Um, the longest eclipse. Would you happen to know off the top of your head how how long would uh, uh how long can an eclipse be? I would imagine maybe a bit under two minutes or uh, or one and a half minute. Uh, I think the longest ones can go about eight oh, minutes of totality. Wrong. I'm really off. <laughs> yeah, uh, off the top of my head, I don't know to the nearest second, but those are e exceedingly rare. Um, your typical average eclipse might be closer to four mm. to five minutes. Yeah. Um, that's just of totality we're talking about. Um, from the moment the moon touches the sun until it passes through and all the way across is about three hours, and that's what we're experiencing today. At least in Exmouth, we saw the first uh, contact at just after 10 o'clock in the morning and we will expect the last contact when the moon fully leaves the face of the sun at uh, about just before 1 p.m so about three hours and that's pretty typical across the course of a total solar eclipse but the length of that totality can vary mm. by you know, up to one minute or up to seven or eight so is is today's eclipse really short just because it's a total oh sorry just because it's a, a hybrid eclipse because you're mentioning it has to be at that exact spot um, in between Earth and the Moon, and Earth and the Sun, right? So is it because it's a hybrid? Why yeah. It's so short? Well, yes, yeah, because the Moon is not at its current closest point to the Earth. So if the Moon was at its closest point in its orbit to the Earth, called perigee, it would look quite large in our sky. But uh, perigee was uh, a week or two ago, so the Moon is n not at its closest point to the Earth. So it looks a bit smaller in the sky. Uh, and as a result, that's also why it is a hybrid, because yeah, at certain parts of the Earth, it's not even large enough to completely cover the sun and cause totality. Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason we got totality in Exmouth, as I mentioned, is because of the curvature of the Earth. We are literally slightly closer to the moon, and it makes it just big enough to cover the moon. Um, and yeah, it's all to do with that uh, eccentricity, the elliptical shape of the Earth's orbit, uh, of the moon's orbit, sorry, meaning that it is sometimes closer and sometimes further, and we're sort of somewhere along that right now. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so the next question, I think Leon will be very, you would be, you would know that hopefully. So, um, Ellen from Singapore asked, are there any indigenous Australian myths about eclipses? Oh yeah, we, I would love to know some. Yeah. You've stumped stump me with that. I have no doubt that there are. <laughs> I personally don't uh, know uh, any in particular, and I think that I'm probably not the best person to answer that question. I think we should um, consult an Indigenous group who would no doubt be happy to tell you any number of stories, not just about eclipses, of course, but about the wonderful night sky of Australia uh, and uh, even things during the day as well. So uh, I'm afraid I can't answer that, but I have no doubt there will absolutely be stories about them. But uh, I don't think I should be the one to tell them. Mm. Okay. So maybe if it's possible, you can link us up with some stories or, or, or mythologies of you know, celestial events in um, Australia or from, from the indigenous point of view, then maybe we can share those as well because um, the stars is for everyone to see and everyone comes up with their own version of the night sky, their own drawings. And um, I, I had a guest ask me this once uh, because usually the, the common constellations that we project onto the night sky, uh, the common constellations that we talk about, it's usually the Greco-Roman constellations, the 88 ones that are recognized by NASA. But we would also want to know more about maybe the Chinese, mm -hmm. maybe the, the uh, indigenous um, Australia, the people from Australia or um, the Polynesians as well, mm -hmm. because they have the same stars but a different map. So yeah. do link us up, please. We'll certainly find uh, what we can. <laughs> thank you, thank, <laughs> thank you very you much. So, much. so yes. moving on to the next question by Amit from Singapore. Um, it is said that we should not go out during a solar eclipse and uh, solar radiation is there all the time. What changes during an eclipse that like, uh, warrant such a warning? Mm, so we're talking about radiation, right? Yeah, solar radiation. Solar radiation. So um, in general, it's the same as just going out mm -hmm. on a normal sunny day, uh -huh. right? Actually, it's, it's kind of better than going out on a normal sunny day because it's a, a lot more cooling, right? Mm -hmm. So the point is just you can't look at the sun um, without protection on. In general, don't look at the sun right? without protection on. Again, sunglasses are not enough. right? So um, everyday common day things like today, if you were to go out and, and just observe and see the sun, it's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in, uh, go out your everyday life, it's fine. It doesn't affect you at all. Um, the radiation doesn't come in and, and do anything any more than it already is already giving you a sunburn maybe. Mm -hmm. right? So that's yeah, don't worry. It's safe to go out. <laughs> Just don't look at the sun. <laughs> Actually, may I ask how how hot is it in Exmouth nowadays? It's definitely getting warm again. <laughs> I'm just thinking about putting more sunscreen on. You can see the the sun is still only about fifty percent, maybe sixty percent visible, and uh, I'm starting to sweat again. The wind is starting to pick up. The ground is starting to heat up. Oh. So. Uh, Make sure you're wearing protection. Oh, I can see a sunspot. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. a beautiful sunspot just coming out from the shadow of the moon. Yeah. Yes. So it's not just one spot. I see there's multiple, multiple smaller spots. So that's where you're saying the arc mm. of that, that prominence is coming out, right? Um, yes. The, the yeah, they are related to yeah. the sunspots. And Very beautiful. Yes. So uh, the oh. next question is by Michael from Indonesia, Jakarta. Ooh, hello. So uh, Michael knows about total and annular eclipses, but the changes from total to annular is still intriguing, and he asks for us to elaborate. Oh, so um, as as mentioned, right, mm -hmm. today's eclipse is really really special. It's a hybrid, mm -hmm. right? So at some places, okay, we will see a total. Some places we'll see an annular. So where he is right now is Indonesia, it's right? From Indonesia. It's yeah. from Indonesia, right? So he will probably see an annular solar eclipse, mm. right? Because as mentioned, the curvature of the Earth. Right, brings Australia and Exmouth just right into the point where it will be a total solar eclipse. And then as the moon moves across mm -hmm. outwards towards Indonesia, right, it, Indonesia kind of curves away because mm. the Earth is not Earth flat, is the Earth is round, right, <laughs> as it moves away, right. So the moon kind of looks a bit further away and as it looks mm. further away, it's a little bit smaller, smaller, right, and that's why you get that annular solar eclipse, right. Yep. So um, one thing I wanted to ask, I mean, we've heard 
I've heard about this before, right? Um, they said that the moon is slowly moving away from the Earth mm -hmm. as 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 it does, it slowly moves away. And in one somewhere in the future, we will not have any more solar eclipse. Oh no! Is that true? Yes, that is oh, no. true. Oh, no. And it's to <laughs> fortunately, it's not for a very long time. You know, millions oh, of years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, the reason for that is uh, because of the tides and the ocean on the Earth. It's uh, as the moon, uh, as the Earth rotates and spins so quickly, it kind of drags the moon along a bit. And a bit like if you can imagine you're swinging something above your head on a piece of elastic, that piece of elastic is going to stretch the faster you swing it. And so Earth is slightly swinging the moon around, and bit by bit by bit, the moon is getting further and further and further away. And eventually, it will be so far away that no matter where you are on Earth, you won't get a total solar eclipse. We will still get annular solar oh, eclipses, nice. but uh, totality, like we just witnessed, uh, is oh. a limited event. <laughs> By limited, you say a few million years? <laughs> yeah, it might be a hundred million years. Oh, okay. So don't worry, anybody. <laughs> We've got a few few more to look towards. Right, so next time a uh, total comes by, just say you need to catch it before it disappears in a few million years. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Only seven hundred and twenty million sleeps to go. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh. Um, so, Earth is definitely not the only one that will get an eclipse, right? Because there are other planets with moons. Um, Jupiter, Saturn has many, many moons. So, do they have eclipses as well? They absolutely do. However, the Earth and the Moon and the Sun system is the only one where there is that perfect alignment, where the Moon and the Sun are exactly the same size in the sky. So we have video footage taken by the rovers on Mars of eclipses of Mars's moons passing in front of the Sun. But they, you can imagine the Sun is there and the moons are these little tiny potato shaped things that only cover maybe 10 or 20 percent mm. of the Sun. Uh, so they don't have those total solar eclipses like we do here on Earth. And they certainly don't see the corona. Mm -hmm. So you're saying Earth, our system, Earth, Moon, Sun, is the only one with perfect alignment. Can you explain more about that? Yeah, so the, it's, it's a beautiful coincidence that the, the Sun is 400 times bigger than the Moon, but it's also 400 times further away. Oh. And so the two factors cancel out exactly. You have this big thing over here and this quite small. And when you're standing on the Earth, they both look the same size in the sky. Uh, whereas for all of the other planets and moons, you have the big sun, but you might have this really tiny moon. And so it doesn't quite look the same size in the sky. And that's why you don't get totality. Ah. Right, okay. So if you don't know how big the, the sun is or how big it looks in the sky, just look at the moon and it should be the same size, am I right? All right, that's... More or less, yes. Yeah, there's sometimes fractional changes depending on where the moon is in its orbit but you're not going to notice those unless you measure it and here's another useful thing is you can actually hold out your pinky at arm's length and that size of your fingernail is about the same size as the moon and the sun in the sky so a pinky at arm's length the moon at 400,000 kilometers away or the sun at 150 million kilometers away they all look about the same size oh, I've got to try that out not tonight because tonight it's a new no. I'm going to try it out in two weeks time to see this effect. Maybe my pinky is just small. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move yeah, on to the next question. To the next oh. Ruth from the Canadian International School asks, well, what is the difference between a solar and lunar eclipse? And uh, she notes that this morning uh, the sky looks very yellow in Singapore. And she asks if this was because of the eclipse. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, um, there's, there's actually two effects, there's two phenomena mm -hmm. happening here, right? So um, why is the sky yellowish this morning? It most likely is due to um, the slight haze that we're having in Singapore, uh -huh. right? So because of that haze, it kind of um, refracts, refracts, uh, reflects and reflects the light mm. that is coming from the sun. So why we always say the sun is kind of yellowish and orange mm -hmm. in color? Because when the sun rises from the east, it has to go through a lot of layer of air, mm. right? Because the atmosphere, right? Go through a lot of layer of air and then that air actually bounces and scatters the light away. And that's why the sun kind of looks yellowish and orange mm -hmm. to us, right? As it as the sun rises and the sun sets, right? Mm -hmm. That's why they're that's when they're most most beautiful, right? 
Okay? But when as it's rising and the light is coming down and we have that layer of haze mm -hmm. in Singapore, which we kind of currently are having just a little bit, kind of sense that light around as well. And that's why it gives you this kind of yellowish hue mm -hmm. over Singapore. That's what we, we saw in the morning today. Right. And then back to your other question, the difference between a solar and a lunar eclipse. I'm going to do a so quick demonstration. Back to the, back to the photos hmm. again. Okay, so again, you I'm are the star of the show today. All right. So you are the sun. Right. So um, the moon is here mm -hmm. and the earth is here. Um, this is not in scale, so please don't quote me on that, but these are not printed in the same scale. All right. So when the sun shines on the earth, all right, and the moon comes in and casts a shadow, all right, from earth you look up, all right, towards the sun, mm -hmm. all right, that would be a solar eclipse. So that's when the moon kind of blocks mm -hmm. the, uh, the the light from the sun from earth. The point of view is from the earth. Let's bring Australia in here, all right, and then that is a solar eclipse because the sun, the soul, all right, is being covered by the moon, all right. The opposite would be a lunar eclipse. So the sun is there again, and the earth moves in between the moon and the sun, right, to cast a, a shadow on the moon, right. So that is a lunar eclipse because from your point of view, you look out towards the moon, all right, and you see the moon getting blocked by the sun, uh, getting blocked by uh, uh, the shadow, right. That is the earth, right. Of course, if ever happens where the sun is in between the earth and the moon, we should be worried. Yeah, we should be worried. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't happen, all right. <laughs> That's called the apocalypse. Exactly. Right. So that is the difference between a solar eclipse where it's sun, moon, earth, and then a lunar eclipse where it's sun, earth, and moon. Hmm. So depending on which is being blocked. Which is being blocked. Yes. Yes. And of course, we are the ones who are who are observing it. That's why it's a lunar or solar eclipse. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the next question is by Lee from Singapore. Uh, will Singaporeans be able to see the eclipse? And they commented that the sky is very clear. Let me go and check. <laughs> it's on the way. Okay. So meanwhile, no. oh no. Alright, so um, yeah. unfortunately, okay. Unfortunately, yes, the sky is pretty clear, but it's also covered by a very heavy layer of clouds. Yeah. So all our telescopes, they work by line of sight. So you have to physically be able to see the object, mm. star, sun, planet. Um, if not, uh, you, you cannot see the object. You cannot mm. see through a telescope. Because the telescope is not something that sends light outwards. Right? Yeah. The telescope is basically a bucket. It collects the it light. Collects the light. Yeah. So if there is no light coming through, or if there's very little light coming through the clouds, right? the telescope cannot collect that light and it cannot show us the image. So unfortunately, um, it's very cloudy today, so mm. my telescope cannot look through the clouds, right? That's not how a telescope works. But um, yes, even though it's quite clear or bright, right, we can't see the sun. I am very sorry yes. for that. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. It's going to be cloudy the whole day in Singapore. Oh man. Yeah, so the next question is by Raja from Singapore. So uh, Raja comments that there's a pen umbo mm. lunar eclipse in Singapore on the night of this. The, on the 5th of May. So what's the difference between a penumbral um, pen um, yeah. eclipse and a partial lunar eclipse? And um, will and will we be able to see any portion of the moon being hidden during this penumbral eclipse? Right. So, uh, Leon, would you want to try to answer that question? Yeah, yeah absolutely. A penumbral eclipse is uh, essentially another name for a partial eclipse. Mm. So if you are on the surface of the moon during the penumbral eclipse that's going to happen on the March the 5th and 6th, I believe, mm -hmm. you would see the Earth partially block the sun, but there will always be a bit of the sun peeking out from the side of the Earth. And for that reason, there won't be a total shadow all over the moon. So if you're out looking at the moon on that night, you will notice that the moon will definitely look not as bright as usual. Mm. But it's not going to be like a total lunar eclipse where the moon moves entirely into the Earth's shadow and you get essentially totality on the moon and uh, you get the blood moon effect from the, the, the light scattering through the Earth's atmosphere onto the surface of the moon. So yeah, penumbral eclipse is another name for a partial eclipse. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you're on the surface of the moon, you would be seeing essentially what we're seeing on our live stream right now, except the Earth would be blocking the sun. Mm -hmm. That's what you would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the moon will just look just a little bit dimmer 
from yeah. what it normally does. So yeah. uh, unfortunately, not yeah. much of a of a difference. Then. Yeah. Okay. Um, no. Now, yeah. can I point out the two eclipses are related mm -hmm. because right now we have the sun, mm -hmm. the moon, and the earth, mm -hmm. and they are all lined up. And right now, the moon is casting a shadow on the earth, and then two weeks time, the moon will have moved on its orbit all the way around to the other side of the earth. Mm -hmm. And because at this time of year right now, they are perfectly lined up. Right. Now be an earth shadow. And that's why we have these two eclipses related. And we call this eclipse seasons. Mm -hmm. And eclipses tend to come in groups just like that. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, kind of running out of time. So I think this next last one would be the last question for, last for the day. Question? Mm -hmm. uh, the last question is by Yun. Uh, why is the brightness currently not affected in Singapore, considering that the sun is right now blocked? And he un uh, Ian understands that it's cloudy, but they would have expected it to get darker, and yeah, they did not. Ah, so um, we did mention this just yeah, now. Uh, we did mention this just now, right? So, um, and you can see the effect through the telescope. So right now, okay, from the live stream, okay, I would estimate it's about twenty odd percent around there. So this is already more than what mm -hmm. Singapore will be facing, right, in terms of the partial solar eclipse that we're getting in Singapore. So YFS on the live stream now is already more than what Singapore mm. would have, right? And even where Leon is, it's already very bright, mm. right? That much of yeah, that sun that's so. coming through, it's still going to illuminate the entirety of the Earth. sun is just that bright, right? That little bit of the moon is not going to do much in terms of shape mm -hmm. um, the Earth or wherever we are, right? So, uh, no, it's not going to get any darker than it already is right now in Singapore. Because right now in Singapore, we're just gonna pass our maximum, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not gonna get any darker than it is, right? Yeah, speaking of Singapore, there's just one question that you should address, right. I feel. That why is then, somebody asked, why is there no solar eclipse in Singapore today? Why is there no solar eclipse? <laughs> Can you like explain that? Why is there no solar eclipse? So uh, the, the joke that I will always tell my guests when they come to the they come to the observatory and they look into the sky and it's all cloudy and say, how come I can't see the star? Right, the cloud. Yeah. Right, yeah. it is unfortunately really cloudy today. Um, there was a big thunderstorm at the start of uh, this morning. Yeah. Yes, I am. My, my shoes are drenched. Yeah. Okay, but um, because of those clouds, okay, it covers the sun and therefore we cannot see the solar. Yeah, but there is still a solar. There is still a solar eclipse. Still a solar. Yes, yes. <laughs> It's not that there is no solar eclipse, there is still a solar eclipse, it's just that right now, um, in Singapore, in, in, in our, what we would say, we swear. Yeah, yeah, we are very, very unfortunate. We are very unfortunate that yes. we cannot see through that thick layer of clouds. So, yes, that is yes. Uh, reality. Uh, stargazing in Singapore, I was always say, you're either looking at clouds or you're looking at light pollution. <laughs> okay, so... I <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, I, I will just add in one last yes. thing. Even though the sun is still 15 to 20 percent covered by the moon, it's really quite hot here now <laughs> and very bright. So, to adding on to that, that's the maximum you'll experience in Singapore. And I can tell you right now, it's getting pretty hot and unpleasant. <laughs> okay, so we won't hold you for much longer. Leon, do you have any final closing words for our audience, for your amazing tech crew? <laughs> yeah, a big thank you to the amazing tech crew, most importantly, being able to uh, bring this, us here at Xmouth and you in here in Singapore, uh, over there in Singapore, to all of the people listening. Thank you for listening in. I hope you've uh, been inspired. I hope you've learned something and enjoyed the conversation that we've been having here and uh, never stop looking up. Please yeah. look up with proper protection. Yes. <laughs> yes, correct. Please look up with, pro with appropriate equipment. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for being here. We'll see you soon. We'll be in contact soon. Yes, yes thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you much for this collaboration, yeah. this chance to have a international conversation about the sun. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Enjoy your totality in about... Well, not totally. Enjoy your maximum in about 28 years. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you. So, this concludes our stream for today. Thank you so much for joining us today for the solar eclipse viewing, even though like, um, it's unfortunate yeah. <laughs> for us. Yeah. But before we end the stream, uh, we would like to thank our producers behind the camera. Thank you so yes, much. Lydia and Yunwei for managing the hardware and the stream transitions. 
Uh, additionally, if you are interested in future astronomical uh, occurrences in Singapore, don't forget to come down to Science Centre Singapore and uh, check out Observatory. So uh, follow our social media like pages on Facebook and Instagram to find out more about the opening dates and hours of our observatory. Yep. So with that, um, stay safe, stay, safe, stay, stay curious, curious, and, and always looking. look up. Yeah. <laughs> bye Thank everyone! You. Bye bye!